What exactly is a drill mill and how do you use it? What you're seeing in the camera view is a drill mill. This one specifically is a four flute carbide drill mill. And what a drill mill is used for is to put a 45 degree chamfer on the edge of your part. So you can use this to deburr your part or put big chamfers on your part. As opposed to signing it up, angling it with an angle master and then using a flat end mill. It kind of looks like an end mill except it goes to a point. The degrees from this flute right here to the other angle flute is going to be 90 degrees. So that way whenever you're cutting your part it's putting a 45 degree chamfer onto your part. Let's go ahead and jump into how do you go about using a drill mill. Whenever you cut, you want to make sure that the tip, the very tip of your drill mill is as close to this edge as you need it to be. You can, as long as you're cutting on the angle of your drill mill, that's all that matters. You don't want to dig the tip of your drill mill into your part. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it's going to have an angle and a flat. So you want your part to have an angle all the way down the face. So be sure after you eyeball the center of your drill mill to be on the left side of your part or the right side depending on what side you're cutting. All you have to worry about from then on is bringing your knee up and basically bringing your drill mill deeper into your part. You do not have to move in the X direction once you set this. We're going to go ahead and turn our spindle on and we are going to cut a chamfer and then we are going to discuss how to measure that chamfer. All you have to do is bring your knee up till it touches. And we're going to put a decent sized chamfer on. Now let's discuss how to go about measuring this chamfer. The tools that you're going to need is a set of calibers. And how you go about measuring is you take your calibers and really what you need to do is move the vise out of the way. Go ahead and set zero on your DRO and move it out of the way so that way you can get a good measure. But for now I'm just kind of showing you guys how to go about measuring and you want to measure not at the high pot, high pot noose of the angle. You want to eyeball and once you get good at this you can eyeball within five thou or so across this direction. So what I do is I open the calibers and I'll move the calibers until it hits the line and then I'll bring the calibers in and looking straight down on top of the part. So let me, let me grab a marker and, I, and I'll be more specific with you guys. Okay, now that we have taken a cut, I'm going to set zero on my DRO and then I'm going to move slightly to the left or right, that way you guys can see what I'm talking about. Alright, now that we have a small chamfer, I'm going to kind of blow this up for you guys and tell you how to go about measuring the chamfer. Alright, we have a chamfer like this. Now. How to go about measuring the chamfer is, uh, it's not really tricky, you just have to get used to it. All you need is a set of calibers, and what you're going to do is you're going to eyeball this point and this point. And how you go about doing that is looking straight down on your part with your set of calibers, and you are not going to measure across the hypotenuse. You are going to keep your, part, your, par your calibers parallel with your part, and you are going to eyeball those two points. By eyeballing those two points, you are going to get your measurement and then what you need to do is take your measurement. So let's say that we measured out 100 thou. So we got point 0.1. Now we want, let's say, point 0.2. So we want a measurement of our chamfer at point 0.2. Well what you need to do is take point 0.2, so take what you want minus what you have, so 0.2 minus 0.1 is 0.1 and divide that by 2. That's 50 thou. Then all you have to do is bring your knee up 50 thou 
and then take another cut and then you should have the right measurement unless you measured wrong and then go ahead and take a second and third measurement and you just slowly work it in from there. But basically after you take a light cut, you measure across the, 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 and the angle with calibers, keeping the calibers parallel with your part, not measuring down the hypotenuse but eyeballing those two, the two points which will be the two lines here and here and you take what you want minus what you have, divide that by two, and that's how much you raise your knee up. Now the first, the first cut will usually get you within about 10, 15 thou, and then you slowly start working it in from there. Other than that, that is what a drill mill is, and that is how you use it. It is very simple, and you can also set a stop up on your vise. Once you get a drill mill set on one, one face, as long as the other faces are the same thickness as you flip your part around as long as it doesn't doesn't change in height so as long as it doesn't grow taller or shorter then you can put a chamfer all the way around your part the best way to set a chamfer whenever you're squaring up a part and you want to put a nice chamfer on is setting your chamfer to the back jaw because your back jaw doesn't move in Y you can put a stop up and that, that will let, allow you to not move your part in X as well so you put a chamfer on the back of your part and if your part is square all the way around, you could put an angle or a chamfer on every edge. But again, your part cannot grow in Z or shrink in Z, otherwise the chamfer won't touch it or it will gouge the part and cut too much. Other than that, that is how you drill mill. And we will have more examples as the following tutorials continue, especially in the project files.